Hello everyone, welcome back to this series on Pi AEDT. This video is going to focus in on Pi Twin Builder. This is going to be just like uh, our exploration into 2D Maxwell. We're going to start with just setting up um, the basic script. It's going to look familiar if you watch the other video. We're going to start by importing all of the different libraries that we're going to be using. This time I also added matplotlib because I'll be plotting with it at the end. Then we go through the same cell block as before where we set everything up. Uh, we'll set the version of the software we're going to be using, just using an auto setup. And in this case, I'm going to be using new graphical equals false, even though I've been keeping this true for the most part lately. And these last two are saying the exact same thing, did not need to be written twice. With all that set up, we can go ahead and run the cell block that is going to open up Twin Builder. So we can see this opened up, um, whether or not it says EM or TB at the top will just depend on how you have your environment configured. For me, I have it as the electromagnetic desktop, but it's going to be the same for what we're doing. We're now ready to get started building our bridge rectifier. We'll start with this conversion factor. This is going to help us type everything in easier as we go along. Now to figure out how to do this next part, you can, of course, always going to say pull up the API. Under the modeler and component circuit, if you open up the modeler of the twin builder, you can see these different methods and the attributes. The attribute that we want to look at if, is, of course, the schematic. From here, I can see that this is going to be using the twin builder components. Let's check those out. And we have a lot to, look, um, to work with. This is what I was looking for. So twin builder components create diode. Good place to start for a bridge rectifier. The hierarchy will end up looking like this. If we want to start filling this in, we can just put in the location and the angle of it as some of its arguments. And if you're curious what just a single one is going to look like, let's go ahead and just see. There it is. Looks like the angle argument didn't work, but we'll just keep moving. Let's go ahead and put in all of our diodes. Now you have to be careful. You can see what I did here. I ran this block twice and it over or it did not overwrite. It did not just say, hey, I already have this diode here. It added another one on top of it. So control Z, control Z, control Z. And you can see we're all the way back to just having a single diode. And you know, let's even go before then and we will put all of these in. Next, we'll add in our capacitor filter, our load resistor. Oh, I accidentally ran this. It's mad at the syntax because I omitted this parenthesis, which is good because I didn't want it to run that anyway. So now we have the dials, the capacitor, and the load resistor. Last thing we need, of course, is the ground. Oh, well. Guess the ground gets a cell of its own. Last thing we need to do, of course, is connect all of these. These will just be done with a couple different wire points and pins like this. And of course, another parenthesis missing, try again. Connected. Let's wire up the source. What, did we forget a source? Yep, we don't have a source up here. I wanna have that as my first cell. Source is gonna be done the same way that we did the diodes and capacitors. It's gonna be create voltage source. First thing will be its name and then the type. Oh, I'm sorry, the type and then the name. We can put in those arguments like this. And let's put that one in there. There we are. It's really fun having uh, the software update in live time as I um, run my cells. With this wired, let's wire the source now that we have one. I 
forget the resistor and capacitor. And this looks pretty good. Unfortunately, the angle did not work. I need to look into why I can't have these tilted right now. But still, uh, this bridge rectifier works just fine. Let's move on. Really all we have to do is uh, parameterize a transient setup and that's very easily done. We'll do 100 milliseconds and really that's all that we have to do. Um, with that setup done, set that and we can just run a transient on this. This is finished, I'm going to show you just using matplotlib. Uh, from here we can get our node voltages very easily. Um, there's just a simple command. For example, if we want to see the voltage, our AC voltage, um, it is simply the get solution data, E value. The E value is the voltage of the VAC source. So if I want to see the volts across this source, it's that dot V. If I want to see the voltage across this capacitor, I could say C1 dot V or of course resistor R1 dot V. We can do either of those right now, for example. Um, I'll go down the line and we'll do the exact same. Oop. All right, well, that's already plotted. We can do the exact same thing over lane on top of it. There you go. I'm sorry. We'll put these all in the same in the same plot this time. This is exactly what we expect to see. The voltage across um, the RC circuit is pulsing, as you'd expect. It charges the capacitor, discharges on the cycle, charges and discharges. The input voltage can clearly be seen, and with that. Our bridge rectifier simulation uh, practice is complete. The very last thing that you always need to do because we're nice to our kernel is release the desktop. Goodbye desktop. That's it for this tutorial. If you have any questions or if there's anything that you want to see us simulate, let me know in the comments below. Otherwise, this has been Ian from Ozone Engineering. Thanks for watching.